Now we come to the Glasgow bedspread, so-called because I actually bought it in Glasgow um, from a lady who she'd inherited it from her husband's family and she had no family and she wanted it to go to a good home. So she tried to give it to me, but eventually I persuaded her to sell it to me so that I could insure it properly and I wasn't hugely worried about um, traveling with it. So it has been all over the place with me. But unfortunately, I'm not taking it out too often now because it has rust holes and um, I think that this was made as a bed head and then unpinned and uh, this lady said she had actually put the edging round herself and originally I didn't like this edging fabric at all but in fact it is absolutely of period. Now this was stitched in 1910 and um, in Scotland and it's an Arthur Lee design and in 1910 this is what my great aunts look like and there they are in the garden, 10 miles from where I live now. And that's why I moved to where I live now. And that's their little dog, Cappy. Now, remember, this is Auntie Queenie and Sophie. And uh, they were just a delight. And they travelled and they were artists and they were just very good people. And this use of double thread again, double thread in all the layers of the shading here. So first colour, second colour, third colour. And I'm just going to take you. Oh, yes, hey, there she is, E.M. We don't know who E.M. is. And sadly, the lady I bought this from has died. So I don't know who E.M. was. Actually, I don't think she did either. I think one of the clever things on this piece is actually the use of brown and the use of the pewter greens and greys um, uniting the whole piece. All the stems are made in this base coat of the pewtery colours and uh, it's just really, really sets up the flowers and the features off so well. Now, every time this lady finished a, a feature, she ran the, or man, I don't know, she ran, he or she ran the colour down into the stem. So you'll see occasionally where there's been a leaf and then there's too much colour of that leaf and it just, she just uses or he uses a little bit, little patches. So you get little patches of pink coming from the surrounding flowers or purples. Um, and I'm going to find my favourite because I've shown this to a lot of people and I cannot tell you what joy it is to share pieces like this because every time you share with somebody else somebody else points out look what fantastic colour use that is there's pinks to blues and brown to this gorgeous cherry red who would think of that with that lovely green I just think that's amazing and I get very it's almost tearful I'm afraid just looking at these colours amazing absolutely amazing and it's very obvious to go from pale pink through all the colors you know color one two three four in a range but to jump from range to range from color to color within the same feature i do like these pinks to blues i must say and then a little dash of brown there and the richness of that dark chocolate brown in the middle of it really really is clever and then these the raised work, fantastic. Greys through to uh, yellows. There's a lot of grey to yellow with this. Sort of a creamy yellow. In fact, this is a pretty well an exercise in how to bring grey into your designs. You might think it's not a colour, but you just look at grey and see the echoes for other colours. And how sympathetically that grey shades through to a deeper grey on the right hand side but on the left hand side you get this lovely sagey green mixing up with it. I rather like being in charge of the camera myself you know because when Richard and I film together he sort of waves a leg at me to say shh <laughs> you've gone on long enough but actually I think five minutes looking at this is five minutes well spent. And if this gives you some ideas for your own designs, then I am a very happy bunny. 
and thank you very much. I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying showing you these pieces. So fortunately, although we don't know the name of the person, we just know their initials, we know that this was stitched actually in 1914. So it'll be taking her or him at least six months, but probably, probably a year or two but beautifully done and it's by one person's hand throughout. So it's got a marvellous consistency and many people have actually stitched our replica of this because we had it as a kit.